Hi boys and girls, this is Mr. Wassman, and today we are looking at how to find estimates and evaluate answers. We are in our home links on uh, Unit 4, Lesson 2, and let's take a look at these instructions because they uh, have an interesting tidbit to them. It says, write an estimate and show your thinking. Oh, well, that's nothing new. But wait, what's that? It says to solve using a calculator... That's heresy. Why would we allow you to use a calculator in math? Doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of teaching you how to do things? Well, at this stage in your development, no, it does not. Because before you can run, you have to learn how to walk. So we need to uh, get an understanding of how large digit multiplication works. And the way we're going to do that is through estimation. So what we're going to do here is, there's a couple of steps here. It says, uh, we have a story problem here that's going to involve uh, some estimation by doing some rounding of some numbers uh, that we can multiply. Now, if you recall, in the previous lesson, 4.1, uh, we learned how to extend our multiplication facts by just adding zeros behind single-digit numbers, making them into tens and hundreds. And by multiplying the single digits within the tens and hundreds, we can find larger answers. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make some estimates, and then we're going to confirm our answers using a calculator. Don't get too comfortable uh, breaking out the calculator uh, when it comes to multiplication later on in this unit. This is kind of a, uh, a one-time thing here. Let's read problem number one. It says, Alice sleeps an average of nine hours per night. A cat can sleep up to 20 hours per day. About how many more hours does a cat sleep in one month than Alice? Now, as a cat owner myself, I can attest to the fact that cats sleep a lot. 20 hours does seem like a lot, but, you know, if they're not scurrying about the house, uh, my two cats are usually napping somewhere, catching a sunbeam, uh, sleeping on the couch, trying to sleep in the, my favorite chair, you know, that sort of thing. So before we approach this problem, we need to uh, utilize the strategy of ruckus. That is, of course, reread the problem, underline the question, circle the important parts, come up with an action plan, and then solve. Okay? So let's reread this, shall we? It says, Alice sleeps an average of nine hours per night. A cat sleeps up to 20 hours per day. About how many more hours does a cat sleep in one month than Alice? Okay, so I underlined a couple things, and I circled a couple things, but I want to point out a couple key phrases in this story problem. The first one is the word about. When I see the word about, I know I'm estimating. That means an exact answer isn't required here. Along with how many more, when I see the phrase how many more, that means I'm comparing. And when I compare, that means I'm usually subtracting. I'm subtracting the difference between how much a cat sleeps in a month compared to uh, Alice the person. The last thing I want to draw your attention to is some units. Okay. The information given to us is in days or nights, or a 24-hour period, but you are asked to come up with the answer that represents one month, okay? So we're going to have to do some estimation, uh, first of all, to give us an average month, because no two months have the exact same number of days, and then we're going to have to do some estimation to get us some larger digit uh, uh, products, okay? So let's start with Alice. Alice sleeps about nine hours per night. Okay. So my estimate can start out with the problem nine hours times the number of days that would be within a month. Now, most months either have 30 or 31 days, so I'm going to round to 30 days. Okay. Now, I can round this problem even further by taking the nine hours of sleep per day and round it to the nearest 10, which would be 10 hours a day. So now what I've done is I've created an estimated problem of 10 times 30, and 10 times 30 is really just the number one with a zero behind it, 
times the number 3 with the 0 behind it. And what's 1 times 3, everybody? Well, of course, that's going to be 3. And then I'm going to add 1, 2 zeros behind it. That's because in this equation, both sides need to be equal, which means they have to have the equal number of zeros. Okay? So on average, Alice sleeps about 300 hours in a month. Okay? I'm going to write the units there just so I remember. Now what about this cat? Now the cat supposedly sleeps 20 hours a day. That seems near impossible. You'd have to work at it to get that much sleep in. But somehow they do. So 20 hours a day times 30 days. Well, that's just 2 times 3 with some zeros involved. So 2 times 3, of course, is going to give me 6. And then I have to include 1, 2 zeros behind it. So that would be 600 hours that a cat sleeps in a month. 20 hours a day times 30 days within the average month. So, what do I do with this information? So, I have to subtract because it says how many more hours does a cat sleep versus Alice. So, I'm going to subtract 600 hours, that's the cat, minus 300 hours, that's Alice. And of course, 6 minus 3 is going to give me 3, so 6 with 1, 2 zeros behind it, minus 3 with 1, 2 zeros behind it, is going to give me a difference of 300 hours. That's how much more uh, the cat sleeps in a month combined versus uh, a person. Okay, So where it says about, I'm going to put about how many hours we're talking about, and that's 300 hours. Now, is my answer reasonable? Yes. Next question. No, wait a minute. I actually have to prove my point, and that's where your calculator comes in. It says solve using a calculator. So what I would really do is I would multiply what 9 times 30 gives me. Well, that one's pretty easy, honestly. Uh, 9 times 3 is going to give me 27. So 9 times 3 with a 0 is going to give me 27 with a 0, otherwise known as 270. Okay, So that's the actual amount that uh, Alice would sleep uh, in a month if that was a 30-hour month. So what we have to do here is subtract the actual amount. So 600 hours is what the cat sleeps. 270 hours is what the actual person sleeps, Alice, and now I subtract. And This is going to involve a little bit of regrouping because I can't take 7 from 0. I can't take 0 from 0, but when I get to the, my 10s, I need to borrow a group of 100, making my 600 into 500s and making my no 10s into 10 10s. 10 minus 7 is 3. 5 minus 2 is 3 as well. So my actual answer is 330 hours. Okay. So it goes back to the question, how do I know that my answer is reasonable? Okay. We can say something like this. When I subtract the exact products. Products being, of course, the multiplication answers, the difference, that's a subtraction answer, is only off by 30 from my estimate. I write too big, but that's okay. Period. You know, even though we're doing math, we still need to adhere to English conventions. Okay? So when I compare my estimate, which is 300 hours, compared to the actual answer, which is 330 hours, I'm not very far off. So that's a reasonable answer. Is it an exact answer? No. Is it close? Yes. That's what makes it 
reasonable. If my actual answer was, say, 190 or, say, 600 hours, then my estimate of 300 hours would not be reasonable. And that's how you go about solving this problem. You have to first determine what am I going to multiply. Think about, is there anything else I need to do with those numbers once I've multiplied them? Uh, first, I'm going to multiply estimated amounts, and then I'm going to multiply actual amounts, and then I'm going to compare. Okay. Now, I know that this seems like a lot because I see a lot of different colored highlights. I use a lot of different colors with my, uh, with my uh, scratch work. Um, but this is just like, you know, taking down uh, a really large ice cream sundae. It's just one bite at a time. It may seem big in the beginning, but if you work slowly and just take it one bite at a time, you will work your way through it, okay? So try these other two problems, okay? Um, it will require you to follow the ruckus strategy uh, to think about the structure of the problems, but these next two problems are very similar to the first one where you're going to be doing some estimated multiplication and then maybe doing something with those two amounts. Okay, I keep seeing the phrase, how many more, in each of the problems and the parts of the questions. So I think you're going to be comparing some products. Then finally, down at the bottom, Round to the nearest thousand is number four. Now you're going to notice that that number is not in the thousands. It's in the ten thousands. I can tell because there's five digits. Okay? But I'm being asked to round to the nearest thousand. So for a moment, I'm going to ignore this four. And I'm only going to be thinking about this number right here. 5,493. So if I round this number, 5,493, to the nearest 1,000, I'm going to use my roller coaster model here, um, 5,493 falls between two groups of 1,000. They fall between 5,000 and 6,000. The halfway point between would be 5,500. So where would 5,493 go relative to my halfway mark. Well, 5,493 is pretty close, but it's not quite to 500, because if I look at 493, it's not as big as 500. So that entire number would round down back to 5,000. So over here, I would write 5,000. That's the rounded number. But now I remember, hey, wait, it's not just 5,000, it's 45,000 and some change. So I have to take that number, 4, that represents the number of tens of thousands, and put it back. Okay? So rounded to the nearest thousand, 45,493 would round down to about 45,000. Okay? Questions? Well, you know what? You've got a math teacher that will be happy to answer them for you. Uh, but you know what? They're not mind readers. So if you have questions, and if you don't tell them, they won't help you, okay? So if you want help, ask for help. There's no harm or embarrassment in asking someone for help, especially when, as a teacher, that's my job. I am here to help, okay? And I hope this video helped you, too. Until we uh, talk again, friends, have a good day.